Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Introduction to Quantitative Chemistry module. We're in the last uh, couple of videos now. This is number 22 on Avogadro's Law. So by now you've got, I think, the idea of what we're trying to do with these particular series of videos. We're looking at how we can um, identify the relationship between a couple of different variables that we use to describe gases. So again, each time we do this, we try and look at how we can use our knowledge of kinetic theory in order to help us explain what happens with different gases. In this case, we're going to be looking at the relationship between volume and number of moles. As with all things, if we're going to look at two variables, we need to keep the others constant. So in this case, pressure and temperature must be the same. They must be constant and then we can kind of look and see if we can identify any relationship between volume and the number of moles. So the simplest thing to do, I guess, is just to pop in a couple of, uh, couple of particles into a container. If we were to um, increase the number of moles, I'll try not to increase the size of the moles too much, um, but if we wanted the temperature to remain the same so that it wasn't um, going to change the speed of those particles. We want the pressure to stay the same, so we don't want more collisions between the particles and each other or the walls of the container. The only way then, if we're going to have more particles, is to have them in a bigger container. Simple way of looking at that is that if we increase the number of particles, then we must increase the volume. So Conversely, if we expand that volume into a uh, larger volume, then we increase the number of particles in order to fill that space. Now again, this is a relationship and it's one that you kind of have looked at before because we know that there is a particular number that's associated with the actual numbers of particles. And it's what we've been using when we've been doing calculations between the masses of different substances and um, their relative atomic mass. We've looked at calculating using number of moles in our calculations of the concentration of different solutions, that is how many moles there are per unit uh, volume of the solvent. So now we get an opportunity to have a look at how these particles and their distribution um, in gases uh, can be described and also um, how it can change. This, not unsurprisingly, is Avogadro's law. So there is a direct proportionality again between the volume and the number of moles. And so therefore we can use what we've been doing in the past is to put a little equation together that represents Avogadro's law. In this case, um, V1 and N1 are the initial conditions. So the initial number of moles and the initial volume and V2 and N2 is the final number of moles and the final volume. Now, this is again relying on the fact that the relationship between these two variables must occur at a given pressure and temperature. This has actually got a more significant consequence uh, when we're talking about the behavior of gases. As we've looked at previously, um, we can put some values in here and do some substitutions and find out um, a final answer. So um, we could do an example like that, but I think it's more important to understand one very important concept in chemistry. And that is this concept of molar volume. Just as we've looked at molar mass, which we can get either directly from the periodic table for an element, or which we can use the periodic table to calculate for a compound, there is also uh, an amount of gas that is fixed at a particular mole in terms of the volume that it occupies, provided we know what the temperature and the pressure are. So if temperature and pressure are stated, then we can work out exactly what the volume of one mole will be. And each of these is a constant, particular temperatures and pressures. To, to, I guess, restate that in a slightly different way, the molar volume is the amount of space or volume occupied by one mole of any gas at a particular pressure and temperature. And if you remember that when we were calculating the number of moles of solids, we were, we were dividing the mass by the molar mass. 
we can calculate the number of moles of uh, a gas by dividing the volume by the molar volume. And this is something that we can start to have a look at as we start working through some different examples. And of course, this is going to have to be at a particular temperature and also pressure. What this does is it also gives us some specific values and you are given these as part of your data sheet, but we will be using them quite a lot as we as we move forward. Standard temperature and pressure is now defined as 100, and, uh, 100 kilopascals or 10 to the 5 pascals and 273 Kelvin. Now, this uh, was updated in, I think, 1982. Um, from what used to be one atmosphere of pressure, which was about 101.3 kilopascals. So now the standard is 10 to the 5 pascals or 100 kilopascals for both standard uh, temperature and standard laboratory conditions. So this is 100 uh, kilopascals in other words. And what we find is that if we specify the pressure and the temperature and the number of moles we're assuming is one in each of these cases, then we have an exact number of uh, litres that is occupied by that one mole. And you'll notice that as we increase our temperature, we're also increasing our volume. And if we keep the pressure and the number of moles constant, then that's another one of the relationships that we've looked at, that relationship between temperature and volume. Do you remember whose law that was? We're going to do a few different examples on each of these in class, so hopefully this gives you a good introduction to this whole concept of molar volume. And thanks for watching.